Welcome to 28 Days and Beyond. The show where we talk about our history, our heritage, and our culture. I'm Amari. I'm Charisma. Welcome back. AJ. Lizzie Rich beat me to it. What's up? How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. This season we've talked uh, quite a bit about health and wellness. Yes. It is an expansive subject <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about it from this, this, this particular angle. You ready? Okay. All right. Uh, how do you generally feel about your experiences with, with doctors? <sighs> how much time do we have? Yeah, we have, yeah, we, have three, <laughs> um, we have three minutes. Also. <laughs> well, a couple years ago, I actually had a pretty terrible experience as it pertains to doctors. I wow. got really sick out of nowhere, almost died, and had to fight amongst fighting for my health to mm. be heard. To be heard. Yeah. So that's something that we often hear, particularly with, with black patients. Yes. Right? They say that the doctor is not paying attention. They know, you know, um, the big thing about uh, Serena Williams a few years yeah. ago, this is even like the top athlete in it the world. It keeps happening. Like I legit and almost went into cardiac arrest and the next day they tried to do a surgery right. that was not needed. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, the, the, the fact is that there are um, physical ailments, mm -hmm. there are you know, uh, things that they can repair a broken limb, right? They can mm -hmm. do things like, but there's more to healing than just that. Yes. Right, we're talking about a holistic approach to it. So it's not just about like, okay, what medicines do we need to prescribe? There are many other ways uh, that are also necessary in the healing of a human being. Did you have that experience growing up at all? Uh, in terms of doctors? Well, no, just in terms of like exploring like holistic treatments oh, or alternative, I mean, alternative treatments. You no, know, my younger days, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was really into, you know, I would, I would really for a long time, I was like, yo, my first response would be, you know, turning to herbs. Yeah. Turning to different types of vitamins and minerals, you know, I mean, health through, through food, mm -hmm. right? Um, and for, you know, I, mean, I think that that is a very necessary part of it because, yeah. you know, we can go to the doctor and if their first response is going to be, you know, put you on this this medis medication right. that you have to stay on for the rest of your life, right? That has a long list of side effects. Long list of side that, effects. That they usually list very quickly so you can't. Exactly, hear right, exactly. But, but then the other thing is too, I mean, you know, the fact is that the medical industry is not equipped to deal with a lot of the ailments that right. we deal with. One that is extremely prevalent um, and is surprising how understudied it is, mm -hmm. is uh, sickle cell anemia. But yeah. because it doesn't affect you know, the majority Everybody. population, they don't We think. often don't talk about so, it. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's certainly something that, that we need to address. Well, I'm very happy that we'll be joined by Dr. Nina Anderson today. We're going to be talking about sickle cell, mm. the work that she's done, also holistic healing, yeah. and uh, music therapy, which is something I know both hey, of us can really it. appreciate. So I'm really excited to talk to Dr. Nina Anderson. But first, we have to take a break. So we'll be back with more 28 Days and Beyond right after this. And we're back on 28 Days and Beyond, joined now by Dr. Nina Anderson. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you Welcome. for having me today. Yeah. Uh, so, let, so holistic health, music therapy, mm -hmm. what brought you to this, this path? I think it's just the willingness to serve the community mm -hmm. and serve a community that's been underrepresented for 100 years now, mm -hmm. and that's sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. um, my uncle was a state representative in the 60s that actually put legislation through to develop a newborn screening program um, for the Delaware community, mm. but that program never got implemented. Mm. And so I'm just very blessed to come back 50 years later to be able to continue his work. Yeah. So it's just, you know, really trying to serve a community that ha it's been on a disease that's been unspoken and really try to make a difference and set the benchmark for what high quality care should look mm. like. So how did you really start on that path besides your uncle and the work that he's done? Mm -hmm. um, just tell us a little bit more about you and what you actually yeah. do. So my mother was a pediatric nurse and she worked with children. She fought very hard um, for children with disabilities to be educated in the public school. And although she raised six kids and worked night shift, mm -hmm. I saw the letters and the calls that she made to public officials really pushing to make sure children with disabilities were able to be educated in the schools and they shouldn't be in the hospital. They should have assisted technology so that they can learn just like anyone else. And so when I um, graduated from high school, I wanted to continue in that field. Wow. And I just kind of stumbled across sickle cell because it was a a condiz that nobody really wanted to work in the area. It was an unmet need. And my father always said mm -hmm. to me is that you, when you get your education, you come back and you serve your community. So I mm -hmm. felt that's what I wanted to do. Wow. Awesome. Wow. 
-hmm. So, you know, your education includes, uh, you have a, a degree in nursing? Yes, that's correct. I have a doctorate in nursing practice mm -hmm. from Thomas Jefferson University. Okay. And um, I've been working in the sickle cell, uh, with the sickle cell community for 20 years. Oh. So let me ask you then, has your, uh, did, did the education that you received was that an unmet need within that field as well, or you know, I mean, were you, did you have to supplement? And when it comes to learning mm -hmm. about, you know, all the ins and outs of sickle cell, and I had to supplement. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, information, even in my training, about sickle cell, so I had to kind of delve it into it on my own. Mm. And then from that, and because my grandmother's a Black Seminole Indian. I learned the holistic side of medicine. Nice. So um, how to prescribe herbs, how to use herbs to relax yourself or lower your blood pressure, mm -hmm. how to live a healthy lifestyle, um, how to treat chronic pain where you can t train your patients to have good positive energy to mm -hmm. learn how to relax and divert their um, that pain stimuli in a way that's but they can thrive and be functional. So unfortunately, I had to learn it from others in the field, take it, the initiative to mm -hmm. really delve into it on my own. Wow, that's so interesting because I had a similar background with my grandmother and she mm -hmm. introduced my family to herbs and yes. whenever we got sick, it wasn't like, okay, we're going to the doctor. It was like, let's try, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if you need to go to the doctor, we'll go, but let's try some natural yes. medicine first. And I find that we're shifting back to that yeah. way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Like for a long time, it was just like medicine prescribed, mm -hmm. prescribed. And now I find people are finding their way back to holistic medicine. Yes. And I'm really excited about that because when I was growing up, Every Saturday, my grandma would go down to the vitamin store, mm -hmm. you know, and get teas and vitamins. And I, what's been unfortunate, it was like we were the only African Americans going into the vitamin mm -hmm. store. And now I see that shifting because people really want a holistic approach to their care, not just a provider that's going to give them a pill um, that could have potential side effects. They really want a different type of approach to right. their care. You know, one of the things that I was talking about in the introduction is, you know, a lot of the, the, the maladies that we experience, uh, high blood pressure, you know, heart disease, so on, it's like the, the response is to give medicine that doesn't cure, but right. sort of sustains. And we know that there might right. be a pharmaceutical in, in investment in that, that approach to mm -hmm. medicine. What you're talking about is, in a lot of ways, radically different. We're talking Absolutely. about actually making people well, not just keeping people alive. Right. Uh, when we come back from the break, I'd love to jump in more specifically as to how you do what you do and the impact that you've been having. Thank you. Right, so we'll be back with more at 28 Days and Beyond after this. Welcome back to 28 Days and Beyond. We are still here with Dr. Nina Anderson. So before the break, we were talking a little bit about, you know, people circling back to holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. But we want to hear more specifically about what it is that you actually do. Mm -hmm. So when I started a adult sickle cell program, what I noticed is that the healthcare providers and the healthcare industry just constantly treated their pain. Mm -hmm. So there was no comprehensive approach to treating all of the ailments that people with sickle cell experience. It's not just the pain, that blood flows all the way through the body and so all of their organs are affected. Wait, mm -hmm. what? Yes. <laughs> so, so, so it would be a traveling pain because the sickle cell is this, the, mm -hmm. the cells are actually shaped like sickles, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of makes that's right. what that's what causes the right. pain. Okay. So that same blood is traveling throughout. Yes. Yeah, wow. So if you're not getting enough oxygen <sighs> circulating through the tissues and the organs, that causes pain. But just treating a pain is just putting a bandaid on a massive right. wound. And so what I needed to do was to try to figure out how to build a comprehensive model that really invested in the patient as a whole person. That's really interesting. One of my brother and I's uh, best friends, one of his roommates in college, actually had sickle cell. Mm -hmm. And every so often he would have episodes where he'd have to go right. to the hospital. He was in extreme pain. Mm -hmm. And it was my first um, real introduction to sickle cell. I'd heard about it, but no one in my family mm -hmm. had it. So it was my first time actually seeing someone right. that I really loved and cared about going through these mm -hmm. um, these episodes where mm -hmm. he'd be in extreme amounts of mm -hmm. pain. and to know now that there are more treatments that are being done to actually treat what's happening right. versus just masking the pain with morphine or, or mm -hmm. Dilaudid is right. really awesome, I think. Yes. What are, what are some of the things that you would do to you know, make it more than just a Band-Aid? 
Well, I think focusing on the mind, mm. uh, body and soul, so they make sure they have positive energy, really treating depression aggressively and screening mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started um, doing this, the patient was like, well, are you telling me I'm crazy? Like, you think I'm, what's going on? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, no, we do, that's just for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, about 30% of adults with sickle cell are depressed. And if you're depressed and you have chronic pain, that makes it harder yeah. for me as a provider to really provide very good care to them. So I say, you know, you know, one of the unique things I do is I really focus on really making sure that they have good mental health mentation and services. I teach mindfulness meditation. I, I offer therapeutic counseling sessions. I call it therapeutic because I don't think, I, mean, I don't always, they imply, yes, there's something going on, but that's not the key. It's to give them those tools. So mm -hmm. when there are periods of stressors or periods of emotional um, anxiety in their lives, they have the tools to know how to manage it. And not only do you do that incredible work with sickle cell, but you're also an accomplished musician and you do yes. music therapy. So yes. can you tell us about that as well? So um, I'm a classically trained violinist. I actually um, learned how to play the violin in the public school system and then kept mm -hmm. on. I studied privately. I actually studied with some accomplished musicians like Jennifer Haas with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, but what I also find is that when I was telling you that, you know, you really need a comprehensive approach, music is one of the oldest forms of healing. Mm -hmm. It helps you express your emotions. It helps to relax you. And for me, because I work in such a high stress environment, it's been therape therapeutic to me as well. Mm -hmm. So when I started, I would, I would just go to nursing homes. So I was like, hey, there's an audience of people wow. that might, you know, appreciate, um, you know, coming in and just playing music and they just loved it. And so I think as part of the services that I offer, I want to reintroduce that because again, it's giving them all of these tools to help them learn how to live a healthy lifestyle. And so how has the impact been? It's been great because people, you know, when they see me, they don't think I play the violin or they yeah. don't think, <laughs> I don't know what they think, yeah. but when they say, oh, you play the violin too. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I do. And I, you know, introduced this because I want people to see healthcare providers in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that we're here because we want you to live a healthy lifestyle and we want you to have a quality of life. And these are all of these things that we can do outside of the visit to make sure that we give you the tools where to can, be your best. Where can people find out more about what you do and schedule a one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with you? So you can go to my website, which is www.tovacommunityhealth.org. Tova in Hebrew means good. Mm -hmm. So my goal is for all of my clients or patients to have high quality care. Mm -hmm. And you can also call our office at 302-429-5870. <laughs> uh, I think it's really inspirational what you're doing. Uh, the fact that you, you said this was an unmet need. Yes. And, you know, you've decided to dedicate your life to that, employing some of the traditions from your family. Yes. As well as creativity. That's really inspirational. And thank you so much. Thank uh, you. When we come back, we'd love to hear some yes. of, of your violin Please. playing as well. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> we'll be back with more 28 Days and Beyond after this. This has been another episode of 28 Days and Beyond. Where we talk about our history, our heritage, and our culture. We leave you now with a selection from Dr. Nina Anderson. Thank you.